How are you guys doing today? My name is Anima and today we have a TBU League Wi-Fi battle for you all, this time against Bice Productions, the coach of the Twin Leaf Tyrant Hi Bollocks, the Twin Leaf Tyrants. We are the Golden State Dragons, represented by the beautiful golden lizard himself, Heliolisk. Uh, now, Vice is a very, very scary opponent. His team is extremely threatening. I don't really know how he managed to have the points to draft all these things. It's so, so scary. He's got the Age of Slash, as you can see. Um, he has, like, the Conkeldur, and he has he has a very, very solid team. Um, he's got the Weavile as well, and it's just a... It's been doing really good work across the league, so it's, it's a very, very scary team to go up against. I have been horrifyingly busy sorting out, basically recording an entire Let's Play over the course of, like, a day and a bit, because I really want to have all of this content uploaded and done so it'll pop up in, like, search bars and stuff. So... It was really, really helpful for <laughs> for Mr. Frickit for Ellis Lusk to step in and be just a beautiful bro, and he made this wonderful team for me to face Bice in this match. He didn't actually know that he was enabling me to basically do all of this recording that I needed to do on the gaming channel, by the way. Thank you so much, guys, for actually going over there. I'm seeing the sub count slowly increase. And you guys just went to go and see the Life is Strange stuff, and I really appreciate that. That's the stuff that I've been bulk recording, and just, oh my goodness, it's been a ride, but a fun one. So, yes, I'm really happy that this this occurred so that I could actually get the chance to do that. So, enough about that. Um, this was originally a live battle, but I decided to do it post con because the quality of the capture was really, really, really crap, and I couldn't bring myself to put you guys through that. So... On to the team preview. It's looking pretty scary, but honestly, Ellis's intuition is absolutely frightening, and he managed to, managed to predict every single Pokemon that was there. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's very, very scary, actually. Uh, we have a um, we have a nice, nice team, a nice, healthy team. Just a very quick overview for those of you who won't watch the who won't look at uh, the team analysis or whatever. Uh, we've got Bisharp, a choice scarf Bisharp. Uh, so we can destroy that Weavile and we have something for Age of Slash, we have Defiance, so King Shield doesn't matter. We've got Tangler, more or less was to take on the Feraligator, it'd be a dedicated Feraligator switch in, in case that thing came, but is really, really good against physical Age of Slash and can take hits in general. Of course, Mega Pidgeot destroys it, but never mind. Uh, we've got the Hippowdon as well, uh, decent bulk in every kind of aspect. We've got Stealth Rocks, enough speed to outspeed a speed creeping Conkeldur, which is absolutely epic in my humble opinion. Stealth Rocks, Stone Edge for the Mega Pidgeot, uh, slack off that kind of business. We've got an adamant Mega Medicham with the high jump kick, uh, Psycho, no, Zen Headbutt, Bullet Punch, and Fake Out. This is pretty much just Weavile. Bye, Weavile. Bye. Uh, it really just destroys his team once Pidgeot and Aegislash are gone, uh, but of course those two are huge threats and it's not easy to play around with Aegislash, <laughs> honestly. Not in this kind of thing, He's, it's very, very, very scary. Uh, we've got like a really, really cool Greninja. We actually have Spikes and U-Turn on this Greninja as well as Dark Pulse and Ice Beam. So that's pretty damn cool. By the way, we have Psycho Cut on Bishop to hit the Conkeldur on the switch in if that's a thing. We've got Aromatisse, uh, who is our dedicated switch in for the Mega Pidgeot, and uh, it's just really gonna be our thing for taking hits, considering that thing destroys the world. Of course, it really, really threatens my Metacham and stuff. Greninja is the thing that outspeeds it, so we're gonna be really leaning on Greninja to take that thing out. But uh, yeah, so Josh is a pretty scary opponent, and I have never battled him before. I'm strange, actually, that I haven't. And um, yeah, I'd say this game was a long time coming. Anyway, I have rambled on a lot, but just another quick thing. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a team analysis for this, because I really want this to come out on time and just like be good and everything. So I'm actually just going to paste... Uh, I can't even talk today. So I'm actually just going to link you... Uh, the paste bins that Frickit sent me so that you can actually look over those instead and then you will understand uh, the logic and reasoning behind the team, so yeah. Okay guys, so that was kind of a mini team preview and sort of general weirdly gaming channel update thing slash Ellis being a god blah 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 rant. Let's hit play and you guys will see precisely what I saw. Boom, shaka, laka, 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 laka. Shaka. So, 
Here we go, out comes Bertha the Conkelder, who is just a massive, gigantic, horrifying threat indeed, as we decide to lead with Bishop. Basically, the reason we led with Bishop was because uh, we can always switch out if the Conkelder decides to come in. We can safely switch into Hippowdon, who can take any hit from this mole over this top knot fuckhead. Why do you have a top knot, Conkelder? Seriously. I mean, some people can rock a top knot, some people really can't, so it's a bit of a conflict whenever I look at a top knot. I'm like, sometimes it really works, other times it really, really doesn't. So, anyway, we're gonna be able to outspeed this thing. Go for stealth rocks as my opponent goes for a belated taunt. He later told me that this thing was actually speed creeping on us, so premonition, it was real. Powered on out to bed and managed to get the rocks up, which is super nice. So we're gonna go for the EQ here just for damage because I really wanted this thing to just take some damage, put it in range of everybody else. I mean, of course, Metacham could just destroy this thing immediately, but you know what I'm saying, damage is damage and it's very, very good. So we see that it's a leftover as Conkelder, which is very disconcerting. He does actually miss that Toxic there, which is pretty crappy for him. Um, yeah, it's all I can really say to that. That wasn't very cool. But he does land this Toxic, and Flossie is going to get badly poisoned. We don't actually have Heal Bell or Aromatherapy or anything on this team, so Flossie going to stay poisoned, girl. Now, this was really, really irritating for me because I very, very, very strongly debated. Very, very, very strongly debated. Going for a Stone Edge right here as my opponent switches out and goes into our Savior, the Mega Pidgeot. But I didn't. I didn't do that. I was terrible and I went for an EQ and the reason I went for EQ is because I was kind of worried that he'd potentially just keep drain punching me and, and maybe just live and let me stall. That was very bad. It wasn't a very good play. I should have gone for Stone Edge and it would have been completely fine. So I'm going to stay in here as my opponent Mega Evolves. I decided I wanted to try and go for the Stone Edge just once. I wanted to see if I could pull it off. Um, but he does just go for the roost and it's really bad. It's really terrible. It's a free roost for him and it makes sense because, you know, the he, he needs to heal himself and I was kind of hoping that he would potentially go for a heatwave predicting Bishop or forget about Defiant somehow and go for Defog but let's face it he wasn't going to forget about Defiant if he was going to do anything he was going to go for either heatwave or roost or hurricane so I don't want to sit here and potentially just get stalled out with roost and whatnot so I'm going to switch into uh, Newt Toot as my opponent does predict Bishop coming in and goes for the heatwave so Newt Toot's going to take that. Newt Toot is our dedicated uh, switch in for this horrifying Jesus bastard. And uh, the Defog is going to go off and Bishop is going to go curse you in the background. And yeah, this thing is still fucking safe as hell. So we're going to go for the light screen here. We are a support set. We've got Moonblast, light screen, wish and protect. Um, <laughs> sorry, strange eye action going on here. And I decided to throw up a light screen because it'll help us deal with the Aegis Slash potentially and it'll help the team take the Hurricanes coming from this Pidgeot, which nobody can take apart from my Aromatisse right now. So out comes Swamp Derp and fuck you. That's all. That's all, Swamp Derp. Fuck you. I'm lying. I wouldn't really be so mean to a Swamp Derp because I really, really like it. I had a Swamp Derp named Sid in my very first, like, Let's play thing on the channel. It's ridiculous. So we're gonna go into Noodler, who can take anything in the world from the Swampert as my opponent gets this opportunity to set up rocks. So I feel like my best play is just going for a sleep powder here as it's sleep is good, very good. We get to put anything to sleep and that's really, really great. So we end up putting Bertha to sleep, uh, which is a very good play on Josh's behalf because he doesn't really need this Conkelder as much anymore. And it's still at a pretty decent health range, so that thing is going to be his sleep fodder, and out comes our savior, the huge, gigantic threat that we just suffer, <laughs> that we just suffer against. So it is going to get seeded, and a little bit of damage is going to go off on it, but I really can't, I mean, the light screen's off, I, it's literally like 4,000% this hurricane, it just destroys Tangela completely. So we're going to switch out as my opponent predicts this extremely nicely, it goes into Chance, the Aegis Slash, um, and I recognized its name, maybe he's been using the same one anyway, but I knew this was a special Aegis Slash, just from that. Um, I, I just kind of guessed it was, but, you know, he might be changing the set. I, I don't know, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, I don't want to take a flash kind of potential to the face, so I'm actually going to switch into Fish Up, which is really risky because he could have predicted and gone for the uh, Sacred Sword without much problem, without much uh, punishment. But he does just go for the Shadow Ball, which is, uh, which is pretty smart. It's going to do so much damage. This is why Aegis Slash was well into Ubers well before Oras. I know Greninja is in Ubers now, but that's because of Oras. This thing was just a beast, a beast, and I miss using it so much. So I don't care about the King Shield. This is a knockoff for me uh, because I have Defiant, and uh, I'm actually going to get my attack back to neutral because we're going to go down minus two and then go up minus two. So out come up plus two rather. Out comes Dumb Face. We go for the knockoff and just destroy the whole. Oh my God! We just plowed its ancestors basically. So yeah, Jesus Christ. Um, 
we got rid of its leftovers, so I'm guessing that was a nasty pot variant, which could have done a lot of work to my team, so. Uh, he brings in the Swamp Pot, and I thought this was going to be a double switch, because my Tangler coming in was really obvious, and he could have gotten a free hit off by double switching into his Mega Pidgeot, so that's why I decided to stay in and go for the knockoff. And this wasn't good, I die immediately to this EQ, but I tried to do the real play, I tried but Josh did the right play and just went for the safe maneuver. So we're going to now go into Tangler as my opponent gets the switch into Chance, and uh, I believe I just go for the Leech Seed here, which I do, and this is kind of the only thing I can do to this horrifying monster. Um, <laughs> I don't really have a switch in for a special Aegis Slash, and uh, they're really... It's so hard. <laughs> just Slash is so scary. Anyway, out comes our savior as I go for the Giga Drain. I figured I'd just stay in here because I thought I could take anything from this thing. By the way, I do have Synthesis, so I can just kind of mess around and just live potentially. Plus, Regenerator is a thing too, so I cannot stay in on this thing. I gotta switch out into Newt Toot. I dedicated Switch in for this horrifying threat. The pointy stones are going to dig right in my black bum, my little, I don't really understand what those are. And we're going to get hit with this hurricane. We do actually take that pretty damn well, but we get very unlucky and get confused. So the hacks is going to start to balance itself out now. We did get, uh, I believe, I think we got a crit on the right tree, which didn't really matter, and my opponent did miss a toxic, so the toxic could have been annoying for him potentially. But we are going to get fully confused and hit ourselves, so now I believe the hacks is pretty much balanced at this stage. So. Yeah, we're going to hit ourselves. We actually have a zero uh, attack IV, which is why it didn't do anything. Um, and this second hurricane is obviously going to make contact because of no god, and we're going to punch ourselves to actual death. So we get completely disabled here. Um, really, totally just destroyed. <laughs> and honestly, I was, uh, I felt like, ah, oh, well, the game just didn't want Newt to, to live there. I. It, I was just unlucky at that point, so yeah, whatever, it's, it's just like whatever, isn't it? Anyway, so Slim Jim is going to come out and scare the hell out of this thing. I'm going to have to start really, you know, putting the pressure on because we're, we're kind of we're kind of behind right now and uh, it's not very good. So we're going to go for the Ice Beam on Bertha. And here I debated uh, staying in and just going for like an Ice Beam again or like a Dark Pulse because maybe it would kill it in this range, that'd be fine. But I got really afraid he would get the first turn wake and just mark punch me. After the hurricane stuff, I was like, no! <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. So I decided to go into Metacham, who can take anything from this thing. And uh, it looks like it was a defensive Conkeldor anyway, so we would be okay for the most part from anything this thing does. So we are just going to Mega Evolve here. This is our opportunity to do so. Out comes the 8th Wonder in her full incarnation, looking fucking scary. And we're going to get this Zen Headbutt off. And it's going to destroy this Conkeldor, and of course, this crit is going to matter so much, it's not as if it would just destroy it no matter what, I mean, you know, it's adamant that it's pretty weak, so, just, yeah. So out comes our savior. I cannot stay into this thing, so I'm going to choose to sack my Hippowdon. Looking back at it, I'm not 100% sure why I decided to sack Hippowdon as opposed to Tangler. I think I've, I saw Tangler as being more useful, despite Weavile's presence, because I knew that uh, Tangler could, um, could take a hit from Weavile and potentially put something to sleep, whereas I only saw Hippowdon having a good matchup versus the Aegis Slash, so right, yeah, there we go, there's our reasoning, so Frosty's just going to come in to die to uh, two Hurricanes, really proud that Frosty managed to take one, but Hippowdon's bulk is not to be understated, so we're going to go into Greninja, the slimmest of gyms, our tongue flapping around in the breeze, is there a breeze, I don't really know, and we're going to go for the Ice Beam here, I thought about this play a lot, um, Oh no, not this play. There's going to be another play that I'm going to think of. So yeah, we're going to go for the Ice Beam here and just smack Swamp Derp in its terrible, terrible face. And uh, it doesn't die because Swamp Derp is super bulky and this was just a neutral hit anyway. And we're going to go for the Dark Pulse here just because if Aegis Slash wants to come in and go for a Shadow Sneak, we'll be able to take it better. So down goes the Dark, uh, the Dark, Dark Frog, Dark Bastard, Dark Pulse. You know, you know what I'm saying. And out comes two in the pink. This thing is really scary. Uh, it outspeeds Greninja. And without Bisharp, I... <laughs> very scary so we're gonna switch out now go into noodler uh pretty much just to take a hit slash sack slash freak out slash just try and get a free switch into metachan but he does go for the knockoff and this doesn't really do that much damage so i wasn't entirely sure um what kind of weaver that was i thought it might be focus slash sd at this point in time anyway so out comes chance who's gonna take this giga drain absolutely marvelously it just oh my god it's just gonna devour that and uh, yeah, that's mm, delicious. So we go for the sleep powder here, and here is where Noodler proves itself to be just a really 
awesome Pokemon. We get the Sleep Powder off and uh, Chance is going to be stuck in Blade form, which is really it's fascinating, isn't it? It's really, really great. <laughs> it's truly a marvel. So that's really good. He is going to withdraw Chance as I decide to go for the Leech Seed. He actually goes into two in the pink. I'm kind of surprised that he went into two in the pink instead of the Mega Pidgeot. Um, but honestly, this thing is really, really scary, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. So we're going to get this uh, Leech Seed off, and I just wanted to do some damage to this thing because I really wasn't sure if it was Focus Sash or not. But either way, Sash or whatever, it's broken, and that's fine. I'm just going to stay in here and go for the Giga Drain uh, because I'm trying to Psych Noodler off at this point. I've done my job. I've put the Age of Slash to sleep. I've got some damage off on the Weavile, so Noodler has been absolutely stellar for this. I'm really, really, really happy with that. That's just amazing. So uh, Noodler is going to go down to this hurricane which just destroys all of Noodler's ancestors. And uh, now we're going to go out into Slim Jim once again. Putting that offensive pressure. Slim Jim is the only thing that can scare this Pidgeot. Uh, it's very, very tragic. So we're just going to go for the Ice Beam here. And I really thought about this play for a lot. I was like, what if he goes into Weavile and then just destroys me? But then of course he's fearing the Bullet Punch from Mega Metachamp. So we're just going to go for the safe Ice Beam. And uh, Chance is going to get bollocked. Not really, it took it extremely well. The crit was didn't matter at all. It's, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh, Age of Sash is totally fine. Now we're going to go for the Dark Pulse. And um, if Age of Sash was on full, it would definitely be able to take this. Or if it was like Spidoof or something. But uh, no, it's very offensive and scary. So this Dark Pulse is just going to destroy the Age of Sash, which is so nice. That is a huge weight off of my mind. And out comes two in the pink. So I need my Greninja around for the goddamn Pidgeot. So I'm going to switch out and go into the 8th Wonder. So I know that she can take any hit from this Weavile and scare it with the Bullet Punch. So here comes the knockoff. It does a shed load of damage. Absolutely loads. And I'm going to hit pause here because this uh, was a very important moment in my opinion because I thought right, I, I could go for Bullet Punch now and uh, kill the Weavile if he decides to stay in. Seeing that knockoff damage might kill me if he gets like a mid to high roll. It's very in favor of killing me as I eyeball it right now. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, he could definitely maybe try and stay in, but uh, this bullet punch has a very, very high chance of killing him. It does like 80 something to like 97% um, and he's got some damage on him anyway. So it's basically going to die if I go for bullet punch, but he has that Pidgeot that can come in and take two bullet punches, I believe. I think it did a maximum of like 37%. Um, with bullet punch, so I thought I have to go for high jump kick. That's the only thing I can really do here, um, and that's kind of gonna be what I do. So yeah, we're just gonna go for that high jump kick. Out comes our savior. Very strong, very very scary. We go for the high jump kick since he did switch out, and we're going to kick this thing in the face. And Mega Pidgeot is going to get killed by Mega Medicham, so yeah! <laughs> that was very, very nice. Out comes two in the pink, and I got a little scared here uh, looking at the roll, but I thought it really was in my favor since he does have some leech suit damage thanks to Clutch Tangler, and we're gonna go for the bullet punch here, and the Weavile is going to die. So that is gonna be the game, so good game Josh, thank you for the challenge. Um, Shit. <laughs> it's very, it was very, very, uh, I wasn't feeling very well at the time of the game, to be honest. I had a bit of a tummy thing happening, so I was just like, ah, let's just like do the play, blah, blah. But I was freaking out at the, at the Mega Pidgeot situation. I was like, am I really gonna go for high jump kick, really? But, um, it was the play that needed to be done, and, uh, he did switch out, thankfully, so that was, that was very good. That was very good. He was scared of the bullet punch, so. It did get him out into the Mega Pidgeot, but um, yeah, that was a that was a very good game in my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That is going to be another win for the Golden State Dragons, putting us at I believe six and one. So six wins, one loss. I think we're doing pretty well. Uh, I hope we can continue to, you know, win and stuff. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this was a fun game, so that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing to me. Be sure to check out Josh um, Bice Productions, as he is a very competitive battler, and you will probably enjoy his content slash learn a thing or two. Yes! So, I didn't actually say this at the beginning of the video, but today's question of the day... Yeah, you thought I forgot, didn't you? Is... 
what is something that you've been addicted to besides Pokemon? I say besides Pokemon because pretty much if you've been here for a while, you're probably addicted to Pokemon to some degree. Um, I'm gonna say Dark Souls PvP, the first game's PvP. I adored Dark Souls PvP. I played it every day. I was obsessed. Absolutely obsessed. Completely, utterly, just irredeemably obsessed to the point of embarrassment. So, um, yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. I do appreciate that very dearly. Thank you for going to the gaming channel and checking that out. Feel free to subscribe to me if you haven't already so you don't miss stuff. Because that would be sad. But most importantly, take care of yourselves. And I will see you soon, my friends. Bye-bye.